I suppose um, <coughs> this is part two. Let's carry on. And so consequently, that's what the Bible is saying. God is saying, replenish the earth to Adam and Eve. Do it again. <coughs> Who is God? Well, the scripture says, and this is a very difficult word to deal with, God, G-O-D, because uh, you know, that, that's a lot of baggage. What are you talking about when you're talking about God? Well, God is dog spelled backwards, as I said. That's dog. why churches have dogma. Dogma. And their teachings. <laughs> it goes back to Anubis. Anubis, the dog star. Anubis, the dog, the god of uh, and the ancient Egyptian religion. But when you look at the word, and now I get back to what I was going to say to start with. That in Genesis 1-2, where it incorrectly says in the in the and the earth was without form and void. No, the earth became a waste and a desolation. The two Hebrew words that are being translated there is tohu and vohu. Uh, pronunciation, it would be T-O-E hyphen W-H-O, tohu. That's not the way it's spelled in Hebrew, but that's the way it's pronounced. T-O-E W-H-O, tohu. Vohu would be V-O-E. W H O, tohu vohu, waste desolation. There's only two places in the Bible where tohu vohu is used, and it's uh, and those two places they're always used together. And there's only two places to start with. One is in Jeremiah, and one is in Genesis one two. And the and the in the scripture in Jeremiah, Jeremiah says, "I saw the earth in a vision, and the earth." was tohu vohu, tohu meaning vohu. the earth became, and my eyes, I saw the earth, and it became a waste and a desolation. <laughs> well, when did that happen? Well, according to the Jeremiah prophecy, it happened many, many, many thousands of years before, and the prophet Isaiah said God gave him a vision, and in the vision the he saw tohu vohu. the earth and tohu vohu, <laughs> the way turn, which yeah. is the earth became in his eyes. It was beautiful. It was, and the scripture says that Jeremiah says, and the earth was beautiful. Its animals, its birds, uh, its civilizations were absolutely beautiful to see. And then tohu vohu, it became a waste and a desolation, meaning that there, the earth probably was a very beautiful uh, place thousands and thousands of years ago, maybe a hundred thousand years ago. And Jeremiah was given the opportunity to see the way the earth was 30, 40, 50,000 years ago with animals and a whole different beautiful world. And then something happened, some kind of a major catastrophe, tohu vohu. It became a waste and a desolation. Now, when you go back to Genesis 1-2, tohu vohu is always understood to be a situation that the earth goes through when it changes from what the ancients called one dispensation to another dispensation. dispensation. Or one period of time in God's history, not our history but in the history of the universal God force, the way it keeps time. And of course, it's, you know, it, it, uh, one, one day is a thousand years. Well, that's probably more than that. Uh, theoretically, using the term God, how does God keep time? Well, my Lord, you know, God's forever, forever. So, I mean, how long would that be? So, in the, the universal God force concept of time, millions of years are nothing. So, consequently, what is being said there is that tohu vohu implies a total destruction on a cosmic level between dispensations <laughs> of creation between God. Between the time that God created the earth and all these wonderful things were on it, say, 100,000 years ago, and then when something happened, a comet hit the uh, earth is one, one of the ideas that's going around now, a major comet the size of New York hit. What I was thinking about is, um, a while back I posted a video of Michael Tessarion and um, he talks about a great galactic 
cataclysm, a schism. And I wonder that if that could be a potential one. Get in south of uh, Mexico and and caused the dust to fly all over the earth and everything died because it blocked out the sun. I don't know, but but something happened because we know that animals, even in the North Pole, the South Pole, they have found animals that are frozen solid with green vegetation still in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Consequently, something happened many, many, many thousands of years ago which is translated tohu vohu. Some terrible catastrophe happened on the earth in which the gods were angry and, and the whole mm. thing was just level. Well, maybe it wasn't the gods who did it, but the point being is that the Bible is saying that the gods, Elohim, became angry at the creation <laughs> and Jeremiah was allowed to see tohu vohu, a total uh, destruction all over the earth. A major catastrophe. <laughs> we got and one more that minute. is precisely, <laughs> as I said, the words and the concept is used Not for this, the dispensation of one creative period going to another creative period. So when everything is collapsed and destroyed, now theoretically, according to the Bible, God says, come, let us do it again. All right, let's start all over again. And let's create a man and a woman in Rabbi Marvin S. Antelman. Some 35 years ago, Marvin Antelman, A-N-T-E-L-M-A-N-N, -E -N -N, Marvin T Antelman uh, of Newton, Massachusetts, was 35 years ago president of the American Rabbinical Association. And he and I were very close friends for many years. And I used to chide him all the time about his understandings of the Bible. But, uh, but uh, Rabbi Antelman, president of the American Rabbinical Association, said to me, I asked him about that scripture where God said, come, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And I said to Rabbi, what are you talking about, come, let us? Who's <laughs> us? Did God get, get, get permission from somebody else that's working with him or what? And he says, no, it's a misunderstanding on how the sentence is understood by Gentiles and Jews. Jews also misunderstand. They don't know any more than the Gentiles do. There is a correct way to read that sentence. And the, the correct, the, the normal way people think that the scripture is saying when it says God said come let us make man in our image after our likeness. Most people think that that's God is saying, come, let us create a creature. Let us make a, a, a new creation, a creature, and we will call him, uh, uh, maybe we'll call him man. So come, let us make a creature, and we will call him man and woman. Man with a womb, woman. And that's mm -hmm. what most people understand that scripture to mean. That's not what it says at all. Even thought of it like that. Rabbi Antelman says, nowhere in the Bible does it say Excellent. God created man. It doesn't say that. Womb, Go back and read it correctly. What is said is that God said, or El Elohim, the gods said, come let us make man in our image after our likeness. The w correct way to understand that is the gods were saying, come let us make man in our image after our likeness. Not make man, man's already here. Come let us remake man. Do it again. Let us make man according to our image and our likeness. And so the, 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 ancient, uh, the ancient Jews and the Hebrews and all the ancient civilizations that are starting all the way back to Samaria understood what, what was being said. It's just that we don't understand because we, all we get is our news from ABC. We wouldn't know anything about what's going on. But if you go back to the ancient works, you will find that the ancient people, the Sumerians, Babylonians, Phoenician Canaanites, Egyptians, the ancient Greeks and Romans, all of them understood that we are the creation of another, of another entity. We are the creation of the gods. And according to Zachariah Sitchin, and he's not the only one, he's just one that I know personally, but according to the work of Zachariah Sitchin, the Sumerians are saying that extraterrestrials came here from a planet called Nibiru. And Nibiru is, according to the Sumerians, 
they said that Nibiru is a planet about twice the size of the Nibiru. Earth. And that comes, and it is part of our solar system, but it has a huge elliptical orbit. It's not a round orbit, it's elliptical orbit. I've heard this Oblong. is a... And consequently, point. according to the Sumerians, and now we're beginning to scientifically find out that he was right. False. The Sumerians are right. Like the U.S. Better. Navy has even commented on now that there seems to be more than one other planet connected to our solar system with elliptical orbits. Well, that's what the Sumerians were saying. And consequently, this elliptical mm. orbit is every 3,600 years, it comes back into our vicinity and passes through our solar system, then goes back out again. And according to the way the solar system turns in the galaxy, and this thing comes back every 3,600 years, comes back and then goes back out. And consequently, every 3,600 years, Mankind seems to make massive movements on the earth, new things, new technology. All of a sudden, things just start happening. Why? I believe that there's at least enough um, evidence to show that there might be something to this story, that the Sumerians and the Egyptians and all these great civilizations, hmm. not us, we, you know, we have no idea what's going on in right here in our own city. But the ancient peoples knew and said that the gods told them that every 3,600 years they come back through, when they come back through, why travel a long distance when they can just wait, the planet's going to be in the close vicinity, and when it is, it'll be here for a few months, so they will drop off and see how everything is, and, uh, and give you some new up, up uh, uh, you know, some new Don't concepts know, and new ideas, <laughs> uh, depending on how smart you are. If you're still as dumb as last time they were here, you know, why bother? But if <laughs> you progressed a little bit, they will give you a little bit more to work on. Then they get on the planet and leave, and another 3,600 years goes by, and mankind progresses it's again. It's a potential, isn't it? So all of this makes some kind of a, uh, of, a, of a legitimate sense if you are able to look at science, philosophy, religion, biblical history, and, and be able to you know, balance it all out, there is a lot of, there is a modicum of truth in all of this because uh, scientifically things are being proven now that the Sumerians were saying many thousands of years ago. I'm going to have to leave it there because of the time limit again. This is Ayman. Lotus.